डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नमस्कार डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज जील सागर शाह वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस इन डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी वी आर इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग यूजिंग सी प्लस प्लस इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द वेरियस प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड लैंग्वेज लाइक इनहेरिटेंस एंड कैप्सुलेशन पॉलीमोरफिजम एक्सेट्रा we have also learned about the different types of inheritance in c++ like simple inheritance multiple inheritance multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance hybrid inheritance etc we have also seen the various visibility modes in inheritance such as private protected and public we have also learned about the encapsulation and virtual keyword and get the basic idea of operator overloading and function overloading in c++ in the today's lecture we will study about the elements in c++ in elements of c++ language we have tokens identifier character set and symbols basic data types in c++ dynamic initialization of variables reference variable and streams in c++ tokens what is tokens tokens are the basic building blocks in c++ the smallest individual units in a program are known as tokens a, a program which is constructed using a combination of tokens there are five types of tokens keywords variables constants special characters and operators what is keywords keywords are the words with predefined meaning which is already known to the compiler keywords all the keywords in c++ programming language are defined as lower case letters so they must be used only in lower case letters so in c++ language there are total 32 keywords and every keyword has a specific meaning that users cannot change that meaning keywords cannot be used as a user defined names like variable functions arrays pointers etc because they are already known to the compiler every keyword in c++ programming language represents something or specifies some kind of actions to be performed by the compiler for example int switch char class etc they are the keywords in c++ language they already has a predefined meaning in the compiler now variables variables are used to hold data temporarily for example marks age name a variable is a quantity whose value may change during the program execution like i said example like in a care choice they are the types of variables and syntax of declaring variable is first the data type of the variable and the variable name there are total two types of variables in c++ first is numeric variables and character variables in numeric variables the uh, the integer values or floating point values are there 
to store the numeric variables and in character variables alphabets and numbers from 0 to 9 inserted between a single quotes are considered as a character variables. Naming convention for variables. So, this is the most important topic of this lecture. First is a variable name should always contain an alphabets starting from A to Z in lower case or upper case and digits from 0 to 9. It should not be started with the a number or a digit. It is it should not be a keyword because if keyword is there then compiler might get confused that which one is the keyword and which one is the variable name right. Second is case sensitive in C++ language compiler always bifurcate lower case alphabets and upper case alphabets in a different way. So, they both if we take both variables for example int smaller a and int upper case a then in compiler both the variables considered as two different variables not as a single entity. Constants. The constants in C++ are applicable to the value which do not change during the execution of program. C++ has two types of constant, literal constants and symbolic constants. Constants like a they are a fixed values like 3.2, 9.3. So, constants as a name itself, constant is a fixed value. Literal constants can be of different types including integer constants, floating point constants, character constants and boolean constants. Like a name itself, constants are the fixed values in C++ language. The constants in C++ are applicable to the values which do not change during the execution of the program. C++ has two types of constants, literal constants and symbolic constants. Literal constants can be of different types including integer constants, floating point constants and character constants, string constants etc. Literals are represented directly in the source code and do not require any further operations or substitutions. Integer constants they are used to represent values, number values, decimal integer values and constants are represent directly specifying the value or octal, octal integer cost. Octal integer constants start with leading 0 for example 0, 1, 2 and hexadecimal integer constants start with 0x. Floating point constants. Floating point constants are used to represent real numbers with fractional parts. They can be specified using decimal notation or exponential de notation. Decimal floating point constant consists of digits with a decimal point while exponential floating point constants include a decimal part and an exponent part represented by small e or uppercase e. Character constants are used to represent single character. It enclosed in a single quotes. Character constants can be alphanumeric characters, 
स्पेशल कैरेक्टर्स और एस्केप सीक्वेंस एस्केप सीक्वेंस आर स्पेशल कैरेक्टर्स दैट हैव अ स्पेसिफिक मीनिंग सच एज द न्यू लाइन कैरेक्टर दैट इज स्लैश एन और बैक स्लैश कैरेक्टर दैट इज स्लैश बी सिंबॉलिक कॉन्स्टेंस इन सी प्लस प्लस सिंबॉलिक कॉन्स्टेंट इज डिफाइंड इन द सेम वे एज वेरिएबल हाउ एवर आफ्टर इनिशियलाइजेशन ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंट द असाइन वैल्यू कैन नॉट बी ऑल्टर कॉन्स्टेंट कैन बी डिफाइंड इन द फॉलोइंग थ्री वेज हैश डिफाइंड द कॉन्स्ट की वर्ड एंड द इनम की वर्ड वट इज हैश डिफाइंड हैश डिफाइंड is a preprocessor directive that can be used for defining constant such as hash define maximum 100 hash define pi 3.142 so these are the examples of constants using hash define now let's say const keyword the syntax of defining const keyword is const keyword and after that data type of that variable and the variable name that is const float p1 is equal to 3.142 enum keyword enum keyword is used to assign a constant to variable using enum keyword that is enum and curly braces a comma b comma c constants can be defined using enumeration that's why we use enum keyword special characters apart from letters and digits there are some special characters in c++ which help you to manipulate or perform data operations each special symbol has a specific meaning to the c++ compiler so right now just take this snapshot of this special characters you can use this special characters in the coming lectures when you type your program that is curly braces square braces is used for uh, initialization of an array operators operator is a symbol that perform operations on one or more operands there are eight types of operators supported by the c++ language arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators conditional operators assignment operators increment or decrement operators bitwise operator miscellaneous operators such as size of pointer variable so they are the these are the operators which we will use in the next coming lecture and we will see each of them in detail identifiers the identifier is a user defined name of an entity to identify it uniquely during the program execution an identifier is a collection of characters which acts as the name of the variable function array pointer structure etc rules for creating identifiers an identifier can contain upper case letters or lower case letter numeric and underscore symbol only so apart from variable if i want to declare any declare my type of variable 
in C++, then we will use identifier. It, it carries uppercase letter, lowercase letter, numeric value from 0 to 9 and underscore symbol only. An identifier should not start with numerical value. It can always start with letter or an underscore. We should not use any special symbols in between the identifier, not even the white space. However, the only underscore symbol is allowed. Keywords should not used as an identifier. As I said earlier, if I use keyword as identifier, then compiler might get confused between what is my keyword and what is my identifier. There is no limit for the length of an identifier. However, the compiler considers the first 31 characters only. An identifier must be unique in its scope. Character sets and symbols. As every language contains a set of characters, used to construct words or statements, etc. C++ language supports a total of 256 characters. Letters, digits and special characters. Letters, in letters, we have two types of letters, uppercase letters and lowercase letters. In digits, C++ language support 0 to 9 digits and special characters which we have seen in the previous slide. Data types in C++. Data type is a type of data which is used in the program and it is also called as it is to used to declare a variable. There are three types of data types, basic data types, derived data types, user defined data types. In basic data types, we have character, int, float, double. In derived data types, array, function, pointer, reference, they are used. In user defined data types, we use structure, union or class. Today we are going to learn about basic data type in C++. Pr basic data type is also known as primitive data type. In primitive data types, we have short, integer, float data type, double data type, boolean and care. Integer is used to use for stores of variables and whole numbers without decimal. It has a size of 4 bytes only. For example, int x is equal to 10 or y is equal to 37. If we want to declare this type of variables, then we will use integer data type, float data type. Float data type is used with a number 7 digits of single profession. Float data type is used when we want to declare a number with 7 digits of single precision floating point and it has also a size of 4 bytes. For example, float number is equal to 4.78. Double data type. It is used to store a fractional numbers in C++. A real number with 15 digits of double precision floating point numbers with the decimals. It has also a size of 4 bytes. For example, double A is equal to 26.13. We will see all these variables in detail right now. Just get the 
idea about the primitive data types in C++. Bool. Bool data type is also known as Boolean data type, which stores value with two states, either true or false or 0 or 1. When the value is true, it, it is equal to 1 and when value is false, it is equal to 0 and it has a size of only 1 byte. For example, bool is first program true or false, then we will use bool data type. Care, that is character data type. This variable used to store a single character or a number character values are enclosed with a single quoted commas such as small a or uppercase a it has also a size of one byte only for example if i want to declare any vowel then what i will use care vowel is equal to smaller case a Dyma dynamic initialization of variable in c++ we can initialize variable at a runtime this is known as dynamic initialization a variable can be initialized at runtime by using expressions at the place of de declaration. For example, let's see int a is equal to 10. This is declaration. And int b is equal to a into 2. So, this is dynamically initialization of variable b. Because here we dynamically initialize variable b. Let's see one example. For example, hash include io stream using namespace std int main. See out enter radius int r. We are going to see about this in detail, but right now just Concentrate on the dynamic initialization of variable in this program. What I have done is first I have taken the variable r and I stored that variable. What I have done in this program is I want to calculate my area, then I take a radius from the user and after that I dynamically initialize float area is equal to 3.14 into r into r. So, what I have done over here is here area is dynamically initialized in float data type and after that I just simply display my area of circle in this variable a. So, what I will get the output is, first I have take the radius from the user that is 15 and after that I will get the area of a circle because we have dynamically initialized area variable in the program. Reference variable. Reference variable is an alias that is it acts as an alternative name for a previously defined variable. A reference variable behaves similarly as an ordinary variable and also as a pointer variable. Inside a program, it is used as an ordinary variable, but it acts as a pointer variables in C++. So, what is the syntax for declaring a 
रेफरेंस वेरिएबल डेटा टाइप एंड एंड ऑपरेटर एंड द रेफरेंस कीवर्ड आफ्टर दैट वी विल गिव द वेरिएबल नेम एंड विच वेरिएबल नेम वी वॉन्ट टू स्टोर इन अवर रेफरेंस वेरिएबल दैट वेरिएबल नेम वी विल राइट इन द राइट एंड साइड ऑफ द इक्वल्स टू साइन सो डेटा टाइप डेटा टाइप ऑफ अ वेरिएबल लाइक एंड कैरेक्टर फ्लोट एक्सेट्रा वेरिएबल नेम दिस इज द नेम ऑफ द वेरिएबल गिवन बाय द यूजर एंड रेफरेंस वेरिएबल दैट इज द नेम ऑफ द रेफरेंस वेरिएबल नेम reference in reference variable let's see one small example so that you can get an idea about the reference variable first we will include the io stream after that we will use using namespace std int main int a is equal to 8 and int and percent b is equal to a here what we have done is we have declared and reference variable b in the program and then simply we will display variable a and reference variable b and what we will get is the value of a is 8 and the reference variable b is also an 8 why because we have initialize reference variable b and get the value of variable a in b so b is an alias of a variable a i hope you get the idea about what is reference variable in c++ let's see streams in c++ in c++ a stream is used to refer to the flow of data in bytes in a sequence for example if data is received from input devices such as keyword or disk then from input device in sequence then it is called as source stream when the data is passed to the output device then it is called as a destination stream the data is received from keyword or disk and can be passed on to the monitor or to the disk this is the the following figure describes the concept of stream with input and output devices now let's see the mechanism of streams in c++ for example data is in source stream can be used as input data by the program so the source stream is also called as the input stream the destination stream that collects output data from the program is known as output stream the input stream pulls the data from the keyboard from the keyboard or storage devices such as hard disk floppy disk etc the data present in the output stream is passed on to the output devices such as monitor printer etc so the stream x as a intermediator or interface between input output device and the user work king of c in and c out statement in c++ c++ has a number of predefined streams that are also called standard input output objects these streams are automatically activated when the program execution start the four standard streams in c++ c in c out c er and c log are automatically open before the main function and it is 
before the main function is executed and closed after the main function. D. Stream objects which are declared in the header file iostream can be iostream.h. So, this is the header file for cin object and cout object. They are the objects of iostream.h library. So, this is the syntax of scene object, scene then operator, extraction operator and variable. The following are some examples of standard input operations. The scene object followed by symbol which is called as extraction operator and then the variable into which the input data is to be stored. The following are some examples of input operations. For example, int r then c in then we have use caret symbol that is double caret which is known as extraction operator in C++. After that we have also initialize radius variable in float data type and after that what we have done is we have initialized scene and then extraction operator and then radius. What this will do is this will take input from the user. Now see out object syntax. First, C out and then insertion operator and then variable name. C out, the output stream allows performing right operations on output device such as monitor, disk, etc. Output on the standard stream is performed using the C out object. The syntax of the standard output operation is C out, then insertion operator and then items which we will store in variable. What it will do? It will simply display the variable in my screen. More than one item can be displayed using a single C out output stream object such output operations are called cascaded output object are called as cascaded output operations. So, C out BCA third semester. So, what this will do is this will simply give me output. This will simply display in the screen that is BCA third semester. Float area is equal to 15.9. What this will do is in area variable 15.9 is stored and when I write C out then insertion operator and then area what I will get is 15.9 in my screen. Working of C in and C out statement in C++. What this will do is, for example, input device. What is input device? Keyboard. If we write anything in keyboard, the C in object will initialize and then the variable is stored in memory. And when we write extraction, variable and then C out object then what I will get is working of C in and C out statement in C++. I hope now you get the idea about how the data flow will start from input device and get the output in my output device in C++ using C and 
using C in and C out statement in C++. I hope now you get the idea about streams in C++. We will see one program that is write a program to get two numbers from user and print that numbers on the screen. This is the assignment for you all. What you will do is just initialize variable. After that, you just simply get the input from the variable, input from the user using cin object and print that numbers on the screen using cout object so that this will give you the idea about how you initialize variables and then what are the data types of the variables after that you will get the idea about the how c in and c out statement use in c++ language i hope you now get the idea about the keywords in c++ data types in c++ what is the reference variable in C++ and how streams works in C++. In the coming lecture, you will study about the arithmetic operators, relational operators, etc. I hope you get the idea about what is data types, what is variables, what are the streams in the C++. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, but